Hi again then guys and welcome to another instalment of the Automotive News Roundup where we cover some stories mostly in the supercar or racing world that some of you guys might have missed just to keep you in the automotive loop and we've got a couple of these dropping today this one first of all is in the world of McLaren many of you know that I'm not the biggest McLaren fan but this one does have a lot of elements from cars which I have liked in the past of course buttresses behind the seats it's a speedster, which is always very cool in the exotic world as well. Doesn't really happen as often as you might think, considering how much people seem to love speedster cars. But the car is called the McLaren Elva, which is actually linked to a chassis building company way back in the 60s who worked with McLaren on a number of their race cars. And of course, those two brands working together in racing would become uh, pretty influential in the future of what McLaren would become. Now, this car is... Fast, of course, but to give it some perspective in terms of how fast it is, it's even quicker than the Senna from 0 to 125 miles per hour. It can hit that in 6.7 seconds, and that's thanks to the fact that it has a twin turbo 4 litre V8 which puts out 804 horsepower. Now, McLaren claims that this is the lightest road car they've ever produced which is pretty believable considering the clamshell carbon body, minimal interior, no roof, various other things like that. It, it would certainly seem to be true. Now, I would have thought that some of the road-converted M6 McLaren race cars from back in the day might want to weigh in on that discussion, but of course McLaren's probably referring to strict road cars rather than street homologated ones, in a similar way, of course, to how there's a street version of the Porsche 917 even, which is really only a road car in name. Now, as far as this car's performance across the board, I already mentioned the 0-105, or 125 even, the 0-60 is under 3 seconds according to that. Them. It's got a seven speed gearbox and the size of the car in terms of its height is kept to a, a fairly impressive minimum thanks in part to the fact that it has an automatically deploying anti-roll bar for if the car ever does flip over, which is a cool thing. That's probably one of my favorite things actually about this car. It makes a lot of sense to have that, almost like the anti-roll equivalent of a, an airbag, if you will, where it pops out only when needed, rather than increasing the overall height of the car all the time, which is kind of unnecessary. Now, as far as the brakes, of course, stopping power is important. The handling side of things is all what McLaren's about as well. The brakes are also reportedly the most powerful they've ever fitted in a road car as well. Now, as far as price and production, they're actually building a lot more of these than you might expect. It looks like the kind of thing that they might build, like 25 of them. But actually, according to McLaren, they are building 399 of them. And they're going to begin delivering them to customers after the speed tail has finished its run next year. Now, the price tag is hefty, as you would assume. £1.425 million, which is just under $1.7 million. So it's pretty expensive, not too surprising for a car of its caliber. Of course, it joins the ranks of a number of other Speedster-style cars that have come out over the years in the supercar world, even around a decade ago, the Mercedes SLR Sterling Moss, slightly more recently, the Aston Martin CC100, and a couple of others too, of course, currently Ferrari as well, which it will be a rival for. And another small engineering feature about this car that I do like is the way the car actually controls its airflow, because of course it could have the area atom problem of wind blowing in your face except unlike an aerial atom you'll be doing around 200 miles an hour if not more so the way that they've actually combated that is the car as i said manipulates that airflow to actually enter underneath the bodywork and then exit kind of in front of the driver which literally acts to funnel the air over the cockpit area so that it's actually surprisingly calm, at least according to McLaren. Now, whether or not that turns out to be accurate, we'll have to see, of course, but it's a novel concept and kind of a necessary one on a car like this, and it also means that they don't need to have one of those ugly little plastic screens in front of you, which a number of Speedster and open-top track day cars have to have, even though they are apparently offering a small screen, again, Speedster style, as an optional extra. Speaking of optional extras though, another one is the radio, because this car does not come with one as standard. So overall, interesting model, surprisingly high production run, not a surprisingly high price at all, and the performance is impressive for what it is. But given that it is, as I said, the lightest car they've ever built for the street, 
not too surprising that it would be very fast off the line and for acceleration, especially with 800 horsepower. So that's it for this bit of news. Of course, tell me your thoughts on the car down below and stick around on the channel later on today for some other pretty exciting exotic news as well in a completely different realm. But for now, of course, stick around on the channel for more news and leaks and confirmations and exciting little tidbits from the world of cars. And of course, until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.